Welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about things you can do to prevent yourself from getting hacked. And to do this, you need to first recognize how or in what ways a malicious actor may try to hack or otherwise attack you or your device. I've narrowed it down to five main categories. Please be aware that these are the most common categories. It doesn't mean that there's other edge cases. And if you're watching this in the future, for sure 100% there may be new techniques that are being exploited, but these are the five most common. And the first category we're going to talk about is physical access, meaning someone has physical contact with a device. And when a malicious actor has physical contact, there's multiple different areas they can try to exploit. The first thing being typing in the passcode or password to get into your device, either because they know it or because they want to try to guess it or brute force their way in. Also, physical access gives a malicious actor access to the ports. It could be a USB port, a ethernet port. It also gives them physical access to the components like the motherboard and the memory. And it also gives them the potential to remove a drive with your data on it. And so what can you do to protect yourself against an attack that comes in the physical presence of a device? Well, the first thing is using very strong passwords. And this is for all devices, not just your computer, but including your smartphone. A lot of people just use a four digit pin. That is terrible. It's not that hard to brute force your way in past a four digit pin. And so it's important to understand a strong password includes 20 plus characters, a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. You could use a passphrase, which is easier to remember, but at least 20, I would go 25 characters, honestly. And it needs to be across all devices, not just one or two of your devices. Make sure that you are using device encryption on all of your devices. If you're using, for example, Android, you may or may not need to go into the settings to enable that. Same with Windows users, Mac OS users, Linux. Make sure that all of your drives are encrypted. Make sure on your computers you are enabling a UEFI password or BIOS password Word. Be careful with your mobile devices. Phones, laptops can easily be lost or stolen, but even your tower desktop at home, depending on your situation, you may need to take steps to help restrict physical access to that computer. If you have roommates you don't know very well, a lot of people coming and going, or if you live in a neighborhood where crime is common, you may need to take extra steps to protect it from being stolen. Also in Windows specifically, if you open up Windows Defender and go to device security, there are some options here that you'll just want to double check that all of these are enabled. Already mentioned encryption, and you will want to make sure that you use secure boot, but just go through all of these and make sure they are enabled. If you're using a different security solution, double check the device security options on that solution as well. The next category is wireless connection via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Both of these are very big privacy concerns. And when you're out in public, you really should just be turning both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. I know people do like to use public Wi-Fi in hotels or in airports, internet cafes. There's so many risks and problems with this. Hackers have been known to set up what appears to be a legitimate Wi-Fi network posing as, for example, a hotel's Wi-Fi network, tricking customers into connecting to it. Some users will think that if they use a VPN, and they are invincible, things can go wrong. And so the best recommendation I can give is just do not use public Wi-Fi. If for some reason, somehow you have to, 100% first make sure you are connecting to a legitimate network. For example, if you're at a hotel, check with the hotel employees to make sure you're connecting to the correct network and make sure that you are using a reliable, reputable VPN. The only VPN you should ever consider using is either Movad, iVPN, ProtonVPN, or Winscribe. There are a lot of malicious VPNs out there and even some legitimate ones that are not well protected and getting hijacked by hackers. The third category is malicious websites. This will overlap a little bit with the next category, but I think it's somewhat known in 2025 that surfing the web and just going to random websites and clicking on pop-ups and whatnot is not a good idea. And that's still in 2025, a bad idea. You need to be very, very careful about which websites you go to and understand that in some cases, simply going to a website can cause you to get infected with malware or other types of damage. Damage. It may not always require you to click on something on the website. Also avoid pop-ups. And if anything ever comes up on the screen asking you to click the affirmative, a yes, a download, something like that, some sort of call to action, you should avoid clicking on anything like that. 
but I think this goes much deeper. For example, on multiple occasions I've seen on forums like on Reddit and other places where people will post links and without a second thought, they just click on the link that's been posted due to some sort of discussion that's ongoing or a topic that's being discussed. Just because it's on Reddit or some other well-known website, if someone posts a link, you really, really need to be cautious about whether or not you should be clicking on that link. Also, another example is when you go to a website and do a search, like for example here on Google, they will often have ads, they list them as sponsored, at the top of the results. This is the same for DuckDuckGo, they will have their ads as well, and it is very well known that hackers and people who are malicious will post fake ads knowing that they're going to appear at the top and a victim will type in some sort of search, not pay attention, and just click the first result. You will notice that I do not have an ad blocker installed. If I do that exact same search here on Google with an ad blocker, you'll notice none of those ads are listed. In fact, it just gives us the exact same results. Same with on DuckDuckGo, you'll get this pop-up, but you won't see the ads, again, because I have an ad blocker. Ad blockers are one of the very few extensions I would recommend installing for this reason and other reasons due to privacy and security. You can install it here on Firefox, but Brave, LibreWolf, Movad, they all have these ad blockers by default, and I would recommend switching to one of those browsers, especially if you've been using Google Chrome. The next category is malicious apps and programs. This is one of the most common ways for a hacker to get into a computer or otherwise malware, adware, spyware. Tricking a user to install something that looks benign or legitimate, but in actuality is very harmful. And so the general rule of thumb, the best advice I can give is install as few applications as possible. This includes extensions, everything. Some people will install what they think to be a lot of security software that will help protect them. You also have to keep in mind that a legitimate application can be hijacked. We've seen this happen multiple times. And so again, the less software you have installed, the better, because even if a legitimate application gets hijacked, it's less likely to be on your device. On top of this, make sure that you're never, ever, ever using software that is no longer supported, meaning it has to be continuously receiving updates from the developers. This is at the application level, but also the operating system, your BIOS and firmware, all of it. If it's not receiving updates, you need to stop using it. Be very, very cautious as to where you download and install programs. Again, this overlaps the previous category. And yes, you can use app stores, which can help, but they're not bulletproof. We've seen malicious apps fall through the cracks. If you're going to install a web browser, don't download it from a third-party website or third-party source. Just be very, very careful as to what you install and install less of it. The last category is malicious messages. This includes both text messages and emails. When you read about data breaches and hacks and ransomware attacks, this is one of the most common ways those are happening. A hacker will send a malicious text message with a link or an email with a link or an attachment or a button, and they will make it look very real, very legitimate, and they will trick a user into clicking on something in that message, which will either install something malicious or direct them to a malicious website website or otherwise infect their device and there are some extremely advanced attacks where a malicious message has been sent and the user didn't even need to click on anything. This is one of the biggest security threats and it seems like no matter how much warning there is to potential victims, to users, to not click on links and buttons, these hackers are very, very clever in making their messages look real and urgent and in some situations scary. And so users without thinking will just think that something's wrong, they need to click on whatever's listed in the message immediately to get something resolved, and next thing you know, they're infected. So the best thing I can recommend here is with text messages, if you receive a text message from a number you don't know with a link, do not click it whatsoever, just delete the message. If you receive a link from someone you know, double check with them to make sure that they actually sent that message before you click on the link. With emails, I would strongly, strongly recommend as much as possible, just don't click on anything in an email. It's at that level of seriousness. And if you're a business, obviously you're going to have a 
point of contact via email, you need to make sure that you answer those emails or read and open those emails on a separate isolated device, whether that's a computer or something else that is on a separate isolated network. Now those are the main five categories, but I do just want to go over some tips that I would do on top of all this. Some of these we've touched on a little bit already, but again, use a very strong password, at least 20, 25 characters. You could use a passphrase, but make sure it includes a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. Make sure you are using a reliable password manager to store those. Make sure that you enable 2FA or multi-factor authentication on all the services you use. If you are using a service that does not offer 2FA, you might want to consider not using it. Use a VPN and make sure you are using reliable, reputable VPNs, which only include Molvad, iVPN, ProtonVPN, and Winscribe. Use a unique email whenever you are signing up for a service. You can do this with aliasing from Simple Login or MySudo or Addy.io. And by that same token, you should use unique phone numbers as often as possible when signing up for a service. Don't be giving out your personal phone number on every service you sign up for. MySudo can be used for that, or even Google Voice is a better option. Same with payment options. You should be using something like privacy.com, where you can set up a specific card or one-time cards rather than using your actual credit card everywhere. As already mentioned, keep all software up to date, and if it's not receiving updates, don't use it anymore. Install as few applications as possible. Encrypt everything from your drives to your phone calls and text messages and emails. Make sure you're backing up all of your data securely. Backing it up on an unencrypted drive is not a good option. You may want to consider using a premium antivirus. I think Windows Defender plus education works for most people, but if you're a business, a premium version of, for example, Bitdefender may be a good idea. If you're going to use just Windows Defender, make sure you go into the settings. And if you go to virus and threat protection down below, ransomware protection is going to be turned off by default. Make sure to turn this on. Again, especially if you're a business and you're answering emails. Otherwise, Windows Defender is not going to do a great job of protecting you. Make sure you are going through privacy settings on all devices and you limit the permissions, especially with the camera, the microphone, the location, your contacts, your photos. I would recommend staying off social media as much as possible. If you're going to use social media, be very careful what you post. Review your privacy settings. Limit friends or people you add as contacts on those social media sites and try to use the website rather than the app because social media apps are notorious for spying. Freeze your credit and set up fraud alerts. Limit the number of services you're signing up for as much as possible to limit your data being shared and just overall common sense and education. That's everything for this video. If you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it, which this really does need to be shared. And if you would like to support this channel, go ahead and hit that join button, the thanks button, the subscribe button, and that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.